As the world was easing into the festive season last year, one company was surely not. And we're talking about Midjourney. Just a few days before Christmas, it has released its sixth iteration of the famous AI art generating tool. And in this video, we're gonna have a look at how it stacks up against the already amazing previous generation 5.2. Please bear in mind that version six, it's still in its alpha release. So there might be a few shortcomings in the review. What we'll try to achieve with this video is to see if some of the shortcomings that we've seen in previous generations have been fixed. We're going to have a look at image arrangement, details, text generation, which was always a big problem for mid-journey, how items interact in an image, and we're going to have a look at some abstract objects to see how creative mid-journey is this time. One question that we need to answer before we dive in is how do we actually start using mid-journey version 6? We all remember how we generate our prompts. We type in slash imagine and then we type in the prompt. And after that we can add a list of properties that we want to use within our prompt. And one of those options is the version parameter, which we add by dash dash v space and then the version. So in this case, we're going to use dash dash v space 6.0 and that will ensure that we're using the latest iteration. Another option if we want to make the change a bit more permanent is to type in slash settings and then select the version that you want to use, which in this case again is going to be 6.0. And with that out the way, let's start our comparison. Today we'll see a number of different prompts ranging from very basic and simple ones to very precise and almost artistic. So our first category will be arrangement. And if you remember from the previous versions of Mid Journey, sometimes it would find it very challenging to place all the items in the right place as specified in the prompt. If we ask Mid Journey to generate an image of a football on the roof of a car next to a fire hydrant with the sea in the background, these are the results we can expect. With the old version, we see a football, we see a car, we see the sea, there is no fire hydrant and the items are not exactly placed as specified in the prompt. So the football is lying on some kind of metallic item, which I'm not really exactly sure what it is. The car is somewhere in the background. Well, there is a boat in the sea, which is nice, but it's an additional item which we never really requested, but it shows that it's creative, which is cool. On the other hand, with version 6.0, we have everything that we've asked in the prompt, which is fantastic. This changes a lot in the world of mid journey and AI art generation, in my opinion. Since we're at the topic of the differences, there's one thing I wanted to show you. When we generate our image with the previous version, we had a lot of options. So we could move our object to the left, to the right, up and down. We could zoom in, zoom out. We could upscale two times and four times and a couple of other options. With the new version, and I'm sure it's just a limitation because we're in the alpha, we only have upscale subtle, upscale creative, and we have the vary subtle and strong which we had in the previous version. So keep that in mind, but I'm sure that will be changed in the next couple of days or weeks. And I'll show you straight away the difference between upscale subtle and upscale creative. This is upscale subtle and this is upscale creative. There are obvious differences in the images. The football is a little bit different. The paintwork on the car is a little bit more coarse. Yeah, everything's changed a little bit, but I wouldn't say it's a significant difference between the two images. In the next image, the prompt is a lot longer this time. And what we wanna see is a quaint little village in the autumn time with a couple of details such as smoke coming from the roofs and villagers in their warm clothes and a stream going through the town with a wooden bridge above it. And here are the results. The images seem relatively similar, but if we look deeper into it, we see that the Mid Journey version 6 is a lot better at illustrating those kind of things. They're a lot more natural in a way. I mean, I wouldn't say they're photorealistic, but they look like a picture you would actually see in the real world. Look, look at the detail on the water. The water in Mid Journey 5.2 looks very synthetic, whereas the new version has a much more detailed and crisp look to it. Both versions have failed to add the villagers into the picture. However, Mid Journey 6 did add the smoke to the chimneys, so we're still not at that level of detail as we'd expect it to be, but I'm sure that's gonna come with future versions. And if you iterate through the images, I'm sure at some point the villagers will show up. In the next one, we have a safari with um, elephants, giraffes, and zebras, and a safari vehicle somewhere in the background with tourists gazing out into the distance. Well, in the old version, we only see elephants and some strange animals which I cannot identify. Maybe you can, so if you do, then please let me know what they are. However, in the version 6.0, we do have all the animals we've requested. So we've got the giraffes, we've got the elephants, we've got the zebras, and we actually do have tourists gazing out into the distance from the car. Whereas in the old version, I don't think I see any people in the bus. So again, a lot more detail 
well in the images. There are still some drawbacks. So if you look into the zebra in version 6.0, it looks like two zebras merged into one. Yeah, you have to be careful when generating images and trying to use them for certain purposes because there are still errors and mid journey is not perfect and it still sometimes needs some human intervention in the mix. Now let's have a look at another scene. This one is from the 1930s. It's people waiting at a train station for their train to approach. And what I just wanted to show you is the precision of the image. In version six, everything seems very natural and very real. And it almost looks like a picture that you would see somewhere in a museum, for instance. Whereas with version 5.2, very beautiful picture, but there are things which don't make sense, such as the lady who seems like she's attempting to do the limbo dance for some reason. And just looking at the faces of the people, it doesn't seem like a natural setting to me. I'm more convinced about version 6.0 in this case. I think it's easy to realize that version 6.0 is much better at illustrations. Before we move on to the next category, let's have a look at one last example, which is of a Renaissance artist's studio. And the room is filled with natural light from large windows. Easels hold unfinished paintings and the walls are adorned with classical arts. The artist dressed in a period attire is painting a portrait surrounded by various art supplies like brushes, pigments and canvases. Well, the first thing I realized is that the version 5.2 well is missing the artist, to be frank. So arguably one of the most important parts of the image is missing. Both images, however, have really good attention to detail. But if you look at small items like the floor, for example, Mid Journey 6.0 has added a lot of detail into it, which makes the environment look more like an artist's studio. Whereas in version 5.2, the floor is so perfect that it really looks like one of those simulations of an interior. I would just say that Mid Journey 6 makes the images a lot more believable to me as opposed to 5.2, which still look a bit synthetic. So the next category that we're gonna be looking at is detail. The first one we're looking at is hair. And this is a little controversial because I still think that 5.2 has done a better job of drawing hair. The contrast that goes on in version six is a bit too strong and the hair seems a bit too too coarse. It doesn't seem like human hair. It looks like threads a little bit. Whereas in version 5.2, it's a natural look. The curls are photorealistic and a bit more believable. And also um, you can see that as much as Mid Journey likes to remove details from your prompts, it likes to add additional ones. So in this case, we asked for a close-up picture of curly hair. We didn't mention anything about a face, but Mid Journey 5.2 seemed to just add it on its own. In the next one, I wanted to experiment with the lighting. So I've heard from numerous sources that Mid Journey 6 has a better grasp on lighting. And so I asked for a picture of, of a window with condensation on it and some light peering into the room. And I wanted to see what the difference would be. And to be frank, both images are great, but version 6.0, especially if you look at the different focus lengths in the picture, just makes it so much more believable. It looks really like a photo. Whereas 5.2, on first glance, I agree, looks very convincing. But if you look in closer, you see that it's not exactly natural. Whereas with 6, it's hard to tell that it's not a photo. That detail is great. And then comes one of the biggest changes for a lot of people in Mid Journey. So if you've used Mid Journey to generate any form of text in the past, there was not a chance that you would get anything right. It will always come up with random text and it would mess up the whole word. If you wanted to say hello, it would say GXY25. So we put this one to the test. So we've asked for a picture of a vintage cafe with a rustic interior, with wooden tables and chairs and different pastries and coffee machines in the background and exposed brick walls and a lot of different details. And frankly, both of them did pretty all right. But the thing that we wanted to look at directly is the text. And if you want to add text to an image in Mid Journey, what you need to do is wrap it up in double quotes. So the text we wanted to see is start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. And the text, well, we're gonna disregard the version 5.2 because it's complete gibberish. But in the version six, we have start where you are, use what you have, do you who can. So we almost got there, but the advancement is incredible. And if we ask for simpler things, it will definitely get the job right, as we'll see in the next example. The one thing I wanted to point out is that sometimes it does struggle with fonts. So look at the E at the end of where. It's a completely different font to all the other ones in the sentence. So it's on its way, but it's getting a lot better. And even if you think about other tools like DALI 3, for example, it has similar issues when writing stuff like this. You'll often find some errors in the sentence. Let's look at a simpler example. We'll have a peaceful lakeside at dawn, a small wooden dock, and we'll have a sign 
same piece. Version 5.2 has some gibberish written on the dock itself, not on a sign as it was stated in the prompt. So not only did it get the text wrong, it also got the location of the text wrong. Whereas in Mid Journey 6.0, the detail on the water is much better. So you can see the reflection of the clouds above, but the text of peace is perfect and it is on a sign rather than on the dock itself. And we have some, some grass on the side as well as an addition to the picture. The next category that I wanted to have a look at is interaction of items on a picture. The problem with the older versions of Mid Journey were that it was either not creative enough in how different items interact with themselves or it just didn't understand the physics of the real world as much as we would. A good example of that is this boy climbing a palm tree. Bear in mind that the picture from 5.2 is the best one I found from a number of different images. Some of them were ridiculous. I mean, in some of the pictures, the boy was levitating next to the tree or he was upside down on top of the leaves of the tree. This one was the most believable. I mean, that's not really how you climb a palm tree. You would definitely slip off, but he is kind of holding on to it. With Mid Journey 6.0, the boy is actually climbing and this is, well, as far as I know, exactly how you would climb a palm tree. So you can tell that the interactions are hugely improved. And even if you look at the boy from 5.2 again, it doesn't seem like he knows what he's doing. It kind of seems like it's a palm tree and a boy and they're kind of wrapped together, but it doesn't even seem like it's one picture. It seems like there's some kind of mistake going on here. The next picture we have is a man smoking a cigarette holding an umbrella. And again, I've chosen the best picture from 5.2, just to be fair, and a random picture from 6.0. As you can tell, the one in 5.2, he seems to have punctured his throat um, with the umbrella and the umbrella seems to be more of a hat than an umbrella to him. It's kind of strange and the cigarette is nowhere to be seen. In other pictures, we would see the cigarette in his nose or somewhere merged into his face. It was really strange. I don't know why, but Mid Journey was really bad at drawing cigarettes and people holding stuff. So this was the ultimate test. And with version 6.0, the guy is just smoking his cigarette and holding an umbrella. Mission accomplished. And then the next one, which surprised me a little bit and I've read in the internet somewhere that Mid Journey just doesn't know how to draw a witch on a broom. Well, yeah, they were right. I mean, look at the one in 5.2. There is no broom anywhere and she's kind of holding a tree, but you couldn't really hold a tree like that. You would fall down if you held it like that. So doesn't make sense. The interaction is not great. We do have a castle in the background, which is cool. And we do have a little lantern, but yeah, there is no broom and that's exactly what we asked for. So mission failed for this one. Whereas Mid Journey 6.0, yeah, perfect picture of uh, a witch on a broom. And then I wanted to move into a few more abstract pictures. I wanted to see if the two versions of Mid Journey would be able to generate a picture of a monkey playing video games. And to my surprise, they both did a great job. The monkey is holding a, some sort of PlayStation controller or sitting on a couch or on the floor and playing some video games. Mid Journey 6.0 might be a bit of a better graphic, but honestly, two great pictures. For the next two items, I wanted to answer some of life's more important questions. And I'm glad we're at the stage where AI Arts is able to help us solve those mysteries of the modern world. And I'm glad to be the person who answers those questions to you. So the first one is, if a giraffe was wearing a tie, would the tie be at the top of the neck or at the bottom of the neck, because obviously giraffes have extremely long necks. And should the tie be at the bottom or at the top? With Mid Journey 5.2, the question was still open and unanswered. As much as the face is convincing, the neck is much shorter and it's just put a human body on a giraffe. So the neck doesn't really represent a real giraffe's physique. Whereas with version 6.0, we have finally reached one of the most important questions of the internet and the tie is at the top of the neck and the problem is solved. Thank God for AI. And the next question I wanted to answer is if a dog was wearing trousers would it wear the trousers on all fours or just on the hind legs and Mid Journey 5.2 did not do a very good job because it seems to add a human body to an animal's face like with the giraffe whereas with Mid Journey 6.0 we finally get the answer and it seems like the trousers are on all four legs of the dog and well another question is where would the shirt go but that's maybe for next time Having answered those very important questions of life, I think it's time to conclude our little competition today. And my thoughts are that Mid Journey has already been an incredible tool for generating art. 
with version 5.2 and 5 and all the ones before. But the changes that Midjourney 6.0 brings to the table are kind of incredible. I mean, from a distance, they don't seem like that much of a revolution. But if you combine what we had already with a couple of changes, which just make the images just more natural, really. So with the interactions between elements of the picture and the precision of the prompt to the result, and even the text changes, I think we're going in an incredible direction with those tools. So with that being said, I hope you have an amazing time generating some incredible artworks with Midjourney 6.0. And I will see you in the next video. So take care and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.